Hey guys, Chris here from Grace Arms. Just wanted to touch base with you guys. I know it's been a while since my last video or posting. I've been pretty busy with work lately. Um, project I'm working on now uh, that some of you may remember me starting. Um, it's this Model 60 Kui that I'm restoring. It's, uh, I'll try to put a before picture on here so you can see the stock before. Um, and then this is after about 10, 10 coats of oil. So I stripped down the old finish, I sanded it down, I filled in some of the, some of the holes, I used an iron to take out some of the dents, um, and then I just started uh, coating her up with boiled linseed oil and letting her dry, sanding it down, and repeat. So like I said, about 10, maybe 12 coats is on there now. I, I'm just going to keep going with it, see where it goes. But uh, today, we're actually going to put a, aside the stock, and I'd like to take you through an adventure of cold bluing. So I've got the barrel, I've got the magazine tube, and the furniture. I need to blue these today, and I'm going to use Birchwood Casey's Cold Blue, the Perma Blue kit. Um, in my opinion, it's the best. Probably not just my opinion. Anybody that knows Birchwood Casey will agree. So let me get set up for that, and uh, we'll start some bluing. All right, guys. So. When you open up your Kate, your package, Birchwood and Casey Perma Blue Cold Bluing Kit, you're going to have a cleaner degreaser, a blue and rust remover, a Perma Blue bluing liquid, as well as all the things that you'll need for the process: some sandpaper, a sponge steel wool, your applicators, dipping into the solution, wiping on, etc. So let's just go through the process quickly before I get started. Um, bluing is literally rusting at a controlled rate. You want to rust your metal, in this case the barrel. We in order to do it, what we want to do first is we want to clean and degrease so that there's no grease and everything is nice and clean, no debris. We're going to clean and degrease everything. Once everything is cleaned and degreased, then we're going to remove the old blue and any rust that's on there. Right? Then we're going to wash it all off. We're going to degrease it again. If you think it's clean, do it again two more times that's what they recommend prep work like in most other things is the most important step metal preparation wood preparation what's going to determine your final quality is going to be your prep time once you get to the actual bluing you guys are going to see it's going to take seconds wow minutes right the actual bluing is the quickest part of the entire process. But before you even get to that, you need a 100% clean and degreased and bare metal. How are we going to get it down to bare metal? We're going to use these chemicals here. So like I said, they are chemicals. Um, so safety first. I'm going to wear a pair of gloves. Not only am I going to wear the gloves to stop dangerous chemicals from leaching into my bloodstream but I'm also going to wear them so that I don't end up putting my own oils back onto the product that I'm that back onto the barrel uh, if I didn't have the gloves and I was degreasing I'd end up touching it and leaving a thumbprint and then I'd have to redo everything all over again so let's get started with cold bluing what we're gonna do first is degrease and clean everything 
So let me take you through that. Okay, so we're going to start by degreasing it. <clears throat> I like to use just a bit of shop towel. You just want to put a little bit of that degreaser on there. Work it all over in all the little nooks and crannies. You start to dry up. Just get a little bit more. Right? Make sure you're getting everywhere. You don't want any grease left behind. Right? Under the barrel. Right? I got some gloves on so I'm not scared to touch it so I can manipulate it, turn it. I'm not getting any of my oils back on it afterwards, so we're good. Right? Once you've gotten everything degreased with a degreaser, what you want to do is just thoroughly rinse. Thoroughly rinse it all off. guys don't like to put their gun parts in water but water only hurts your metal if it's not taken care of properly just get every little bit of water off of it afterwards and you're fine All right so I've degreased it, right, I've used some water to wash off the degreaser, and now I'm going to dry it. Take a look at it as you're drying it, if you're seeing any spots that you missed, make sure you're going back over them. There's nothing worse than leaving just a little bit of crud and bluing it all and then realizing uh oh looks like crap I gotta start all over again okay so that's step one nice and degreased what we're gonna do now is switch over to our blue and rust remover now some of these chemicals are very stinky especially the blue so make sure you're working in a, a well ventilated area um, I have myself a, a little smoke stack a little blower in the wall that's blowing stuff up and out so I'm okay there so when it comes to your blue and rust remover we want to do the same thing Just get yourself a little shop towel for now we'll switch over to the steel wool after and you just want to put some of that on there and start working that into the the metal right actually you know what I don't have this there we go I hope that doesn't affect the sound quality too much but we want to make sure we're getting most of most of the stuff out all right so I'm just going over this and getting all the little bits as you can see and then I'll switch over to the steel wall work it right in there I want to make sure I'm getting all of that bluing that old finish that crud everything off all right take your time with it right you can already start to see the difference right are you starting to get all that bluing off so what I'm going to do is just pause the video, I'll come back once I've got it back down to bare metal. 
All right, guys, so I've had a good go at this. It's taken me about 10 minutes to get into all the little grooves and make it all nice. But you can definitely see now it's all bare metal. I had to change my setup a little bit because I was going to knock the water over. So let me put the cap on this because we don't want to be spilling this stuff everywhere. And what I'm going to do is bring my water back over. Alright. And now, we're going to thoroughly rinse. We want to get all of that rust remover off. All right. So I can see already that there's a few spots that probably still need to be done. And even if I didn't, I would still give it another coat. Because like they say, if it looks clean, do it two more times. All right? But you can already see. Dry that off. You can already see the difference. All right? Uh, you can actually read the... the stamping now so there we go we've taken off most of the bluing the old bluing and now we're gonna do it again so what we gotta do first like I said before we want to just put a little bit of degreaser on there get off any extra grease that may have been underneath the blue part of the prep work I know it may seem redundant it may seem like an unnecessary step but we want to make sure that we are getting it 100% clean degreased deblued and we're ready for our final application of blue. See, I can already tell there's a lot of pitting and stuff on the barrel. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna hit it with some uh, 280 grit sandpaper just to try to clean it up a little bit. And uh, then I'll follow along with the steel wool and that'll give it a polish. I, when I'm sanding, I'm not going to be wanting to dig too deep. I don't, I don't want to be making more pits and more grooves. I just want to lightly clean up the ones that are already on there. So we'll uh, wash off that degreaser. I'm going to hit it with some more blue and rust remover. Then I'm going to sand. All right, guys. So I've started sanding it, and uh, there are some some really deep gouges that I'm just not going to get with sandpaper. Um, I really should be using a file, but I don't want to get too deep into the, the, the refinishing of the barrel. Um, so I, what, I'm, what I'm doing is I'm wrapping some 320 grit sandpaper. I, I didn't have 280. And I didn't want to go down to 220. So I got some 320 here. And I've got it wrapped around a backer. And I'm just buffing out those surface scratches. Right? And a lot of them are coming out. It's, it, it, it's very, very smooth on a lot of the area 
the surface area. But like I said, there are some some deep scratches. It looks like it looks like it, it was dropped at one point and just kind of bounced along something. I don't know. Fell out the back of an ATV or something. But I don't want to I don't want to make myself too much work here. So I think I'm just going to live with a couple of deep pitted gouges. I mean, it is an old rifle, but for the most part, it is coming pretty nice. Right? Right, there's a really bad one right at the end there. I don't want to take off so much material. So, whoop, oh, that goes that one. All right, so now that I've done that, I can go back to hitting it with a steel wool, and that's just gonna polish it up. It's gonna polish up all those areas that I, oh, that I just made. I just made more surface scratches, right? So I'm. Now I just want to polish and get rid of those scratches so it's all nice and even again, nice and smooth. All right, that's looking good. So I'm going to finish up here and then we'll come back. Uh, what we're going to have to do after is obviously I've got my gloves off now because it was easier to work with my hands. Um, after I'm done the sanding and the and the steel wool I'm gonna have to degrease it again so uh, we'll, we'll come back after and we'll see where we are all right so that was my final my final cleaner and degreaser what I'm doing now is I'm just washing it all off cleaning it thoroughly Then I'll dry it off. And at this point, I get really scared to touch it, even though I'm wearing gloves, because I don't want to transfer any oils back onto it. But we should be okay. So now that it's completely dried, completely cleaned, completely rust removed, and old bluing removed, we are ready for the fun part. The fun part is the perma blue. Now, when it comes to bluing, you want to make sure that you're not leaving this solution on there for any more than any more than about a minute. Sorry, I just had to pause there and get a, a cotton swab. So yeah, you don't want to leave the blue on any more than about a minute. Uh, leaving it on less is better than leaving it on more. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to end up dipping into the, the blue liquid and we're going to brush in nice even strokes over the whole barrel. And you're going to see almost instantly the color change. Once that corrosion starts happening, we got about a minute. And then you got to wash it off. You got to neutralize it with some cold water. That stops the rusting process. After that, you can clean it up and you can hit it again with another round, two, three, four, however many it takes. You don't want to do too many because you don't want to start getting into the browning. Uh, unless that's what you're looking at doing um, but for the bluing I just I just want to add it wash it off check it add it wash it off check it I'm, I'm thinking about two coats should be enough but let's let's take a look so real nice and fast I get my my swab and nice even strokes all the way down the barrel 
dipping it back in whenever it starts drying off and you can see already the color changing on this right you don't have to work you know as quick as possible but you got to work quickly and evenly right we want to make sure we get that in all the little areas the dovetails on the end of the barrel get that solution on there nice and even all the way up and down all right that's really starting to darken up now all right want to get it on the end everywhere that you want blue make sure that you're painting it on there nice and even like all right so look how fast that's starting to react all right so like i said no more than about a minute it's probably being close to a minute now side I'll put the cap on this because we do not want to spill that stuff really stinks all right and then into the water wash it off thoroughly and that neutralizes the bluing agent stops the corrosion process and we can check and re-blue as necessary and I'm sorry that this is taking a little bit more time but I want to be thorough with it Now that all the bluing is neutralized, we'll dry her off. Right? And that's our first coat. And obviously we can see that although it is nice and even, and there's not too many splotchy parts. It definitely needs another coat on there. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and finish it up. And then we'll come back and we'll take a look at it. All right, guys very 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 happy with the results of this this is our final product and it is so nicely evenly blued right most of those surface scratches I was able to get out I mean I still see some of the pitting but it's all nicely filled in anyways that is how you cold blue gun parts or metal all right very 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 good the thing looks brand new all over again I don't know if you guys can see my camera's not very good but uh, it looks really 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 good so what I'm gonna do now just give it a light spray 
with my favorite cleaning stuff, my CLP G96. No workshop, no gunny is complete without it. In fact, let me get a dry rag. Because the point is just to get that moisture off. All right. And just rub that G96 in there. And not only does my workshop now smell amazing again, because that those chemicals don't smell very nice at all. But now it's all nicely protected, nicely blued, and ready for assembly. I just got to do the rest of the pieces. I'll do another video once I've got everything blued and put together, and I'll show you the final result. But uh, that's step by step how you do it. That's how you do the gunning or uh, the bluing on the gun. So yeah, um, if you want to see it in more detail, the whole process of bluing, uh, there's a guy named Brian, uh, Arch Effects LLC. Uh, I'll put a link in the in the uh, video. Uh, but he has a video called How to Cold Blue. Uh, that's with the Birchwood and Casey. And he does a phenomenal job. Um, step by step, all the way through. It's you know it's a 30 minute video. But uh, it's well worth the watch if you're uh, thinking about getting into gun bluing or doing your own, your own gunsmithing and you want to blue something. So, like I said, we'll be back uh, with another video after I'm done everything and put it all together. And we'll s compare the before and the after. Until then, you guys have a, a very nice day. And uh, we'll see you later. Don't forget to subscribe to the video and uh, like the video and all that fun stuff. And... You know, again, I apologize that I haven't been able to put out as many as I'd like to, but, uh, you know, good things to come, right?